Hello and welcome to Unlikely Gamer. Today we're going to take a beginner's look at the world of miniature painting. Miniature painting is gratifying and engaging, but it also offers something very unique in the world of art. The opportunity for self-expression and creativity, but also that you can use in action while playing a tabletop game. In this guide, I'm going to provide you with the necessary knowledge and tools to get started in miniature painting. We'll go through the basics of what brushes, selecting your paints, and preparing your miniature. And we'll also explore some simple techniques and skills that will get you started painting your miniatures today. With a bit of patience, practice, and hopefully this guide, you will soon be on your way to creating stunning miniature masterpieces that you can be proud of. So let's get started. If you are still on the fence about painting your own minis, it's time to get off the fence and just try it. Miniature painting is an excellent activity that can help alleviate stress and anxiety. By sitting down and carefully painting each detail, you enter this meditative state that allows you to relax and unwind. Additionally, the satisfaction of completing a miniature and then playing it on the table with your friends and family gives you this huge sense of accomplishment that will boost your mood and your self-esteem. So obviously before you can paint, you're gonna need materials to get you started. We're gonna go through the essentials and a few extras that I think you might want to have down the road. So let's start with the most important part, your mini. You can find miniatures in various sizes, shapes, materials, styles, genres, games. Minis are available online or from your local hobby or game store. And you may even have some from a board game you already own. Starting with a simple miniature like a human or animal is a great way to begin, but you can find a mini of just about anything. You can paint minis that came with a game you already own or something that you're looking to get into, like Warhammer. I suggest you start with a plastic, pre-built, pre-primed mini to give yourself an easy beginning. D&D actually creates a ton of these beautiful pre-primed minis that are very easy to just start painting straight out of the box. I have a whole other video all about putting together a mini that you can go and find here. Acrylic paints are the most popular for mini artists because they're versatile and very easy to use. I recommend definitely only using acrylic for beginners because they're water-based, it makes them easy to clean up and also they mix very well. I also re recommend only buying paints that are explicitly for miniatures. These might be less expensive at a hobby store or a Joanne fabric but they do not work the same way. Mini paints are specifically made with a higher pigment so you use less of it and it allows for better blending. When it comes to miniature paints, there are a variety of brands to choose from. Each offers its own unique set of colors, finishes, characteristics. Let's take a closer look at a few of the popular brands that are available on the market today and I'll give you my brief opinion on each of them. So for good reason, Citadel is one of the world's most well-known brands for miniature paints. Created by Games Workshop, they offer a wide variety of colors and finishes and a variety of other hobby supplies like brushes, basing material, cutters, tools, terrain pieces. They are known for their high quality and consistency, which makes them a favorite across the miniature paintings. They also come in colors that are directly associated with Warhammer, so it's really easy to look at it and say, ah yes, the hot Thunderhawk. This will go well on my ultramarines. Vallejo is another popular brand of miniature paints that's known for a very wide selection of colors and have super high pigment concentration. They also offer paint sets that are specific for leather, fantasy, metallic, ground cover. They theme everything. And they also have a very extensive tools kit, uh, effects, and great scenery options. Army Painter is a brand of miniature paints that's really known for their quick shade lines. These washes are designed to allow you to paint a miniature and then get shading and highlighted look in just a single step. Army Painter also offers a variety of other miniature paints, hobby supplies, including brushes, basing pieces, materials, terrain, and other tools that are even for playing the games. So these paints are very well known, good quality. I actually really like the quick shades. That's about all I use and their tools. If you've watched my channel at all, you know my go-to paint brand is Monument Hobbies Pro Acryl. Uh, this is a newer line of paints that has gained a lot of popularity in the last few years. They're known for high pigment, 
high contrast, smooth consistency, and vibrant colors, as well as a very wide range that includes a lot of good skin tones, metallics, and then they've just come out with washes and basing materials. So good. Many miniatures paint them because uh, they have very smooth blending. Their consistency is just amazing. It's also super durable and very resistant to chipping, which I like. So if you're looking for a high quality painting to bring your paint to the next level, Monument Hobby is definitely worth considering. And as a Monumental myself, I have a discount code that you can use for five off that's down in the description and in my bio. There are a bunch of other great miniature painting brands, but at the end of the day, what you choose is up to you. Get one from a few different things. You can paint one miniature with bottles from all of them. It doesn't have to be the same. Find what works on your preferences and within your budget. I think it's a good idea to try a bunch of different brands and find the one that works for your unique style and techniques. When selecting the correct brush set for your project, it's a good thing to do to consider the size and shape of the brushes. If I'm painting something of this size, it's going to be very different if I'm painting something this size. So you want to have a good range of sizes from small, um, like double zero, triple zero, this is a 20 zero. Mwah, absolutely love this for doing eyes. Um, so have a good range, you know, brushes should be all across the board. Um, because you're going to run into different things, especially if you're painting a model with any substance, you're going to have bigger portions where you're going to want to make sure that you get consistency, but you're also going to make sure that you can do the details so you want some of those small brushes as well. One marginally contentious factor that I found in the painting world is whether or not uh, you should use synthetic or sable brushes. Synthetic bristles are a great option. They're durable, they're less expensive, you know, they come in the same types of shapes and formats and sizes, sometimes even more. Sable or other natural bristles are considered top of the line for miniature painting for sure. They tend to have a very fine point and the ability to hold a lot of moisture, uh, whether that be paint or water. It makes them really ideal for intricate detail and very smooth blends. They're durable, but only with proper care. And because sable is an animal that is only available in small areas and regions in the world, um, they're quite expensive. So you want to make sure that you're doing proper brush care if you invest in a set of natural bristles. You're also going to need a palette to mix your paint. So you can use a plastic or metal palette. You can use a piece of paper or plastic. Um, you can use palette sheets, whatever works best for you. A wet palette is also a very popular technique amongst miniature painters because it helps keep the paints moist and workable for extended periods of time. So you can go through the entire miniature process with this. So you can either go ahead and buy a actual wet palette that is made for miniature painting like this army painter one, or you can make your own with a plate, some uh, wet paper towel, and a little bit of wax paper or um, something like parchment. Personally, I'm a big fan of wet palettes because it also seems to help me make it smoother because the paint isn't drying, there aren't any chip edges. Um, it really allows me to clean it out a lot better as well because I can just throw away the top layer, wash the uh, sponge and be done with it. So it also takes a little bit of practice to get to, used to in general with a wet palette, um, but I find if you mix in a plastic palette versus a wet palette, um, just give it some time, you're going to get used to the wet palette and it'll make it a lot easier for you. Mm. It is essential to keep your brushes clean with acrylic paint. This is going to help you have the desired color and texture and also prolong the life of your brushes so they don't get caked on with dried paint and other effects. You're gonna need a cup of water also to clean your brushes and dilute the paints during the process. While a cup of water might seem like a really small and insignificant tool, it's actually one of the most crucial steps in the painting process. So choose a cup or container that cleans easy, something that you probably don't want to use for anything else because they do tend to get a little ruined, and you wanna keep it close at hand for your painting session. And remember, any good mini painter will accidentally drink their paint water at some point in time. Now I'm going to talk about preparing your miniature. If you haven't bought a 
pre-created, pre-primed miniature, then you're going to have to go through the assembly process. And I know that can be daunting, but it can be very straightforward and very rewarding. You just have to have a little bit of technique and patience. So your mini is gonna come with a guide on what you need to put together. I like to lay out the mini in order on my table. Before beginning any gluing, take the time to ensure that all of the pieces of the miniature are present and fit together correctly. The more time you put into taking the mini off the sprue, cleaning up the mold lines, filling in gaps, the better your paint job will look. And this is gonna take you a lot of time, but it also will save a lot of frustration in the long run. When you're ready to apply the glue, apply a small amount to the area where pieces will be joined. It's important not to use too much glue. This is gonna cause the pieces to shift or slide around. After applying the glue, press the pieces together and hold them in place for a few seconds. This is gonna allow the glue to set. Miniature glue is specifically made to melt a bit of the plastic so that it sticks together seamlessly. You wanna make sure that you allow this to happen. Once completely dry, that's when you're going to apply your, your primer to the miniature to create that base for your paint. Now when painting your miniatures, it's essential to take the necessary steps to ensure that the finished product looks as good as possible. One crucial step is making sure that it is primed. So you can use a primer uh, either paint on or spray on. I really suggest the spray on. And it's going to help the paint adhere to your miniature and prevent anything like chipping or peeling when you're using the model. So you want to make sure that that hard work doesn't go to waste, but with how many options there are, how do you know which primer to choose? You can absolutely go to the hardware store and get a regular paint primer. That is not a problem, but it isn't specially formulated for the crevices and pieces of a mini. So I do suggest that you get something from say Citadel or Army Painter who offer aerosol spray can primers that work very well. You could go down the rabbit hole and do your own priming with an airbrush. It's entirely up to you. Dry brushing is a painting technique used in miniature painting to add texture or highlight to a model. The method involves using a dry brush. You basically load a small amount of paint onto the brush, wipe most of it off onto a paper towel or other absorbent surface, and then the remaining paint gets brushed on lightly over the raised areas of the model, creating a subtle highlighting effect. This is gonna add depth and detail to things such as fur, chainmail, stone, or other things where you wanna have a highlight or texture. So by choosing brushes with various shapes and sizes, you're going to be able to do anything that you need to do and achieve the desired effects and textures in your work. Then we talked a little bit before about dry brushing, but let's talk about layering. This is a technique in which you uh, basically paint thin layers to in either increase the lightness or increase the darkness. This is gonna basically produce a gradient style effect. And then you're gonna use what's called glazing, which is a very thin coat of translucent type paint of the same color to over the base coat to create a smooth color transition for any place that you've done your grading. To achieve a highly realistic finish, you wanna do highlighting. This is gonna use a lighter shade of paint to basically highlight the figure's details and edges. It's called highlighting because it involves taking a contrasting light color to the base coat, such as a light gray for a black coat cloak or yellow for brown fur. You then apply it to the areas that would catch and reflect the light, such as edges, tips of hair, or any other raised surface that would naturally do so. To create this effect, you're gonna use a very small brush with small bristles, and it's important that you don't blend or hit the neighboring areas. Apply the paint with a very light hand, build the color gradually until you're satisfied with the result. Doing this is going to give your model a three-dimensional and eye-catching appearance. You also need to ensure that as you're doing this process that you pull the mini away from you. Remember, you're looking for table to eye distance instead of hand to eye distance. This is where you're typically gonna be viewing your minis from, not like this. This, not this, this. To ensure that your mini stays in good condition and has a final finished appearance, you need to apply varnish. This step not only protects your miniature, but also gives it a better overall look. When selecting your varnish, it's crucial to decide one that complements the finish that you're going for. This could be glossy, this could be matte, this could be somewhere in between. 
You can use two different types of varnishes. There's brush on and spray on, just like our primer. I suggest again, spray on for the same reasons for the primer. It's the process that you've already learned. It should be easy by this point. Follow the instructions. You'll know how long the varnish needs to dry before you pick that miniature up again. Typically it's at least 30 minutes. And at the end of the day, there are also areas where, so this one for instance, and yes, I know that he's on backwards. Don't point it out. Uh, he's got some lenses. And so the whole thing was varnished in a semi-matte, but I took a little bit of a brush on glossy varnish to highlight those lenses, which makes them look like they're actually made of glass. So you could use varnish in various different ways across one entire miniature. It doesn't have to be across everything. Find the thing that works best for what it has on it. So that's it. You can start painting miniatures today. All you need is some basic materials and a little bit of patience. Remember, practice and experiment with different colors, techniques. Don't just take my word for it. Try your own stuff. Don't worry if your first miniature doesn't look perfect. Mine look awful. Every time I paint with some of my first sisters, I want to literally scrub them down and go back and do them all over again. These are just some things that I have found that worked for me over the years. Come out what works well for you. People, it's art. There's not, there's no one right way to do it. There's so many different opinions in the Warhammer community, the painting community in general. Just do what works for you. Make it work for your budget, for your talent, for what you want to do, for what you want your minis to look like. There's no color scheme that things have to be. It's art. It's fun. I don't necessarily think a gold toilet is a piece of art, but I saw that once in a modern art museum. Do what you want. They're your miniatures. Have fun, relax, and enjoy the process. If you enjoyed my video, please like and subscribe for more, and may your dice always roll crits.